let's understand this with the help of a chart so you require five things to make a contract now what are these five things the first is offer every contract always initiates with an offer unless an offer is made it can never be accepted if it is not accepted it won't lead to being a promise if a promise is not made agreement can't be said to be made and when there is no agreement there can be no contract so the starting the base the initiation of all the contracts is offer the next step is the next thing is acceptance when the offer is made it has to be accepted if it is not accepted the offer will lapse there it will expire there it will end there only but only when the offer is accepted it becomes a promise and promise in turn leads to becoming an agreement an agreement which is enforceable by law will become a contract so you require an offer that offer needs to be accepted so you require acceptance the third thing is promise the offer and acceptance both together make promise so you can see offer plus acceptance leads to promise or set of promises there is a set of promises because both parties promise something to each other this party says i'll give you my bike this party says i'll give you 20000 so we have a set of promises here and these set of promises form consideration for both of them consideration is something in return so when this person says i'll give you my bike he'll get 20000 in return but please bear in mind this 20000 that he gets is a promise for this person and what was promised for this person to give him the bike is consideration for him so both form a set of promises forming consideration for each other so these are the three things the fourth thing is agreement when the set of promises form consideration for each other they make an agreement they make an agreement you can see promise plus consideration equals to agreement so we have reached the fourth stage the fourth thing this is the second last stage the last thing is when this agreement gets enforceability of law now what do you mean by enforceability of law enforceability means the backing of law the force of law you can see the word force in this word enforceability so when this agreement gets the force of law the support of law the backing of law we can say that this agreement has now reached the state reached the stage of becoming contract this agreement will be enforceable that is if one person does not perform his promise let's say this person says after receiving 20000 from this person if he says no i'll not give you my bike i'll not sell you my bike can this person do anything does he have any remedy in law yes what he can do is he can file a complaint with the police for this person against this person he can also go to the court of law and there he can file a suit file a case against this person because the law says i will support you if this person does not honor his promise you come to me i will enforce this agreement on him and he'll have to compulsorily follow it he'll have to compulsorily honor it so this is called the enforceability of law 
when the promise is broken the law will enforce it the law will support you the law will back you so these are the five things that are required and when these five things combine they come together what you have is a contract so for making a contract you need offer then the offer needs acceptance when these two combine it makes a promise promise combining with consideration makes an agreement and agreement when it is enforceable by law becomes a contract please remember these five things now the question is what are the things that make this agreement enforceable what things are required in an agreement so that it can become a contract and to become a contract it needs enforceability of law so let us understand what are the things that are required in an agreement to make it enforceable now these are the points which we, which we are going to discuss now but these points would be discussed in detail later when we study the essentials of a valid agreement we have these points coming in later so now what we'll do is we'll just touch upon these points and move ahead so what all things are required the first thing is intention to create a legal relationship now what do you mean by legal relationship legal relationship means legally binding each other when one person says to another that he sells his bike to him for rupees 20000 and the other person agrees this they both legally bind each other they both get into a legal relationship with with each other now if this person after getting rupees 20000 does not give him the bike this person will go into the court of law and get the contract enforced on him and the court will ask him to pay him uh, to give him the bike so this is called a legal relationship likewise if this person after getting the delivery of the bike does not pay this person 20000 so what this person can do he can again go to the court of law get the contract enforced on this person and the court will ask this person please pay 20000 to this person so when there is an intention at the back of your mind when you think that if the other person does not honor his promise if the other person does not say or does not do what he has said then i will take him to the court and when both the parties think this way we can say that they have formed a legal relationship with each other they have bound each other legally because they are planning to take a legal action against the other person if he does not honor his promise the next is lawful consideration and lawful object we've already discussed what is consideration consideration is something in return when you do anything for the other person you get something in return if you do not get something in return you won't probably do it unless it is for charity or it is for your family but this is not we what we are talking here about we are talking about business transactions here so in business whenever you do something for the other person you get something in return but please bear in mind whatever you get in return has to be lawful if you supply let's say cotton to your customer you should get something in return right you should get money for it what if the supplier gives you guns in return will that be lawful you are getting something in return you have supplied cotton to him and he is giving you guns in return so you are getting something in return but would that be lawful 
no it won't be lawful because trading in guns is illegal it is not lawful it is against the law so something which is lawful is which is as per law you are doing here something which is against the law so it becomes unlawful so this consideration that you are getting in return is unlawful so your consideration always has to be lawful if you get money if you get some other goods which are lawful it is fine but if you get something which is unlawful your consideration becomes unlawful and your agreement will not get enforceability of law because you are already doing something which is prohibited by law how will law support you there it will never support you so you will not get the enforceability of law same is the case with object object is the purpose of the contract it is the main motive of the contract why you are forming the contract this person was selling his bike to him for rupees 20000 so the object of the contract was selling of bike it was the purpose it was the motive of the contract but what if the motive of the contract is not lawful let's say you are paying a person rupees 1 lakh for smuggling gold into india now the consideration here is lawful you are giving him money that is lawful but is the object lawful the object is smuggling of gold which is prohibited by india the law in india similarly if you pay somebody rupees 1 lakh for mur murdering someone else the object again here becomes unlawful likewise if you pay someone for robbing someone else again this contract will be tinted by illegality unlawfulness so as long as the object or the consideration are unlawful law will never enforce the contract the contract will only be enforced if it is lawful free consent what is free consent free consent means the agreement should be free when a person makes a proposal to the other and the other person agrees accepts that acceptance should be free of any force should be free of any dominance should be free of any cheating or fraud the acceptance should not be induced because of force applied let's say this person asks this person or tells him to purchase his bike for rupees 10 lakhs whereas the bike is worth only rupees 20000 he asks him to purchase the bike for rupees 10 lakhs and he tells him that if you do not purchase i will kill you or i will hit you badly now what this person will do out of the fear of death he will do the contract with him he will purchase his bike for rupees 10 lakhs now if such a contract happens where his acceptance is by force such a contract will be said to have been made without free consent the consent that he gave wasn't free it was because of force so such a contract again will not get enforceability all the contracts having free consent will get the enforceability the next requirement for enforceability is agreement should not be expressly declared as void or illegal now you know that murdering somebody is illegal in india robbing someone is illegal in india raping someone is illegal in india defrauding someone is illegal in india these things have been expressly stated in the indian penal code as crimes law says you are not supposed to do all these things 
so all the contracts made for these things that is a contract to kill someone a contract to rape someone a contract to rob someone all these contracts are expressly prohibited by the indian law you cannot enter into contracts like these so all the contracts which are such contracts which are prohibited will not get enforceability but other contracts which are not prohibited by the law in india will get the enforceability so to get the enforceability these contracts should not be declared as illegal or void next is certainty in meaning when you do a contract the terms and conditions should be certain you should understand what the contract is for and what are the various terms of the contract now just pay attention to this statement a says to b will you purchase my bike do you think this is a valid offer no this is not a valid offer because it is not certain from the statement or from the offer that a makes as to for how much for how much will he sell his bike for how much will he be ready to transfer the ownership of his bike he is just making a statement it is not an offer but it is only a statement where he is asking will you purchase my bike if he would have said will you purchase my bike for rupees 20000 that would have amounted to a proper offer so the meaning should be certain the another example is where a asks b will you purchase my bike and a has 10 bikes so again it is uncertain as to which bike he is referring to so there should be certainty always whenever you are making an offer always whenever you are making a contract if the meaning is uncertain if the subject matter is uncertain if the consideration is uncertain such a contract will not get the enforceability of law only those contracts which are certain in meaning which are not vague which are not loosely meant will be enforceable by law next is possibility of performance now what do you mean by possibility of performance every contract that you make should be possible to perform it should be humanly possible so do you think there are some acts which are humanly impossible which humans cannot perform do you think there are some examples or acts which humans can't perform yes there are can a human bring back to life a dead person no he can't can a human walk to moon can he walk from earth to moon no he can't can a human write 100 pages in 1 minute no he can't so all the contracts relating to such acts which are humanly impossible for example a contracts with b that he'll give him 1 lakh rupees if b goes to moon on his bicycle that is impossible you cannot go to moon on a bicycle that's absurd so such contracts will never be entertained by the court court does not entertain impossible contracts if a contracts with b to build a building of five floors in two days and b fails to do so a cannot go to the court and enforce the contract on b because it is humanly impossible to build five floors in two days so such contracts impossible contracts will not get enforceability but contracts which are possible to perform will get the enforceability contracts such as supply of cotton contracts such as 
selling of car contracts such as selling of vegetables and fruits these are very much possible contracts so they will get the enforceability of law the last point is necessary legal formalities some contracts need legal formalities like a contract to purchase a house now if you want to purchase a house that agreement should be in writing not only it should be in writing it should be signed by both the parties along with signatures it is required to be registered by the registrar and it will only be registered if you pay the stamp duty on it so stamping is also required so there are some contracts which require completion of legal formalities one is purchase of property second is a gift deed even when you gift someone something it has to be in writing so these are some legal formalities which need to be completed if purchase of a house is not done on an agreement in writing then it won't be enforceable just a oral contract to purchase a house will not be enforceable you need to complete some legal formalities